So there's been a lot of talk about patriotism in left-wing spaces because of that, you know, ridiculous thing called MAGA communism. But even before that, there was a lot of discussion about can you be a patriot and a left-wing person or even like a communist or something like that, which I'll talk about like in a few minutes. But I've been looking at these subreddits for a while and there's these really, really cringe-inducing pro-America subreddits on Reddit. Now, some of them are more innocent than others and just fall into the trap of clearly these people are very brainwashed through growing up in America. And then there's some other subreddits which is just like neoconservative, blended in with like various other ideologies. It's very, very weird. But basically, I want to go through these and talk about them and talk about like I don't know how Americans come to these conclusions or just the blatant hypocrisy in believing some of these things they post. Now I can see some of you patriotic Americans typing and you're probably saying something about British people or something or like, you know, we fought the revolution for a reason. Well, it so happens I made a video on a Tuesday called the UK is unironically evil. I hate it here saying I really hate the UK and my thumbnail. I really hate the UK. I'm not a patriot in the slightest. Say all the bad things you want about the UK. I actually did that myself on Tuesday. Also, people who know me and know, you know, I have an Irish background. I'm not a fan of the Irish state either because it shares most of the same problems as the United Kingdom. It's really, really influenced by neoliberal capitalism. So there's not much redeeming there. I'm not a patriot of either, but I'm going to make the caveat here, right? Because I think patriotism is stupid. I think nationalism is stupid. And I'm going to talk about like left-wing patriotism in a second. But also, I do understand liking certain parts of where you're from. So I'm born and raised in London. I like London. I think it's a pretty cool place to live. Apart from all, you know, the horrible capitalist elements of like landlords and terrible Tory MPs and stuff like that. There's a lot to like about London. The globalized nature and diversity of it all is something that's redeeming. The history is cool. The nature is cool. I like that. So I understand liking different quirks from your own country. And there's lots of stuff in the UK, which makes me laugh and is like distinctively like British. And I love those memes about like how Americans view the UK versus the reality because it always makes me laugh because the UK, I think most people agree, is really like shit. Like it has so much crap stuff to it but it's kind of part of its charm if you live here. I wouldn't say that makes me a patriot though. I don't feel very strongly about the nation state of the UK. I do understand that growing up in America, growing up in certain parts of America, you will like certain like American things unique to just like general American society. And that is perfectly fine. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about people who are massive simps for the nation state of the United States and are very, very proud of it. And they're proud of pretty much everything America does and thinks America is unironically either the best country in the world or the US domination of global politics is actually a positive force for the world, which is something I do not think at all as a left-wing person. I think America is the number one enemy of working class people all around the world. It upholds this capitalist system it designed for itself after the Second World War. Maybe if Russia or China were the most powerful countries on earth, I would feel similar to them, but they're not. The US has created the system. It maintains this system and it maintains the hypocrisy of the system through the immense power it has with its allies. And that includes in the UN where it can always rely basically on the UK, France and other allied countries to always back them up in ensuring their domination of global politics continues. And that shouldn't be a controversial statement on the left. I'm not saying that just because I hate like American people. I love American people. Loads of you guys are American. Most of my patrons are American. Most of my viewers are American. I love American film. I love American TV. I love American music. I love loads of things about American culture. I'm not talking about culture. I'm talking about the nation state and the history of the nation state. So please keep that in mind before you start typing things about the American Revolution and stuff I couldn't give a shit about because I don't care about being from the UK and historically my family isn't even from England itself. It's all from Ireland. So all of that out of the way before I get Americans very mad in the comments. So anyway, please like the video and in the comments, please write what is the most delusional take you've heard from like pro-American people, like people who won't admit any flaws about America, I'd be interested to know, especially from Americans. Also, follow me on social media 
at the Cabernacle on Twitter and on Instagram. On Instagram, I'm posting about my travels around Asia and I'm putting that all in like the highlight reels on my profile. Also, if you care about my travels, I'm posting one video a month from each country. On my Patreon, I recently posted the one about Vietnam with my girlfriend Holly and that was fun and all patrons get that. So if you care about that, please check out my Patreon page. I'm trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible. And you also get access to the Discord server and my Nintendo Switch friend code. Also check out the second channel where I just post random stuff and check out the subreddit down in the description. So we've already kind of talked about patriotism and just to give like a brief view on left-wing patriotism, I don't agree with patriotism at all, really. And I think a lot of the problems with socialist countries themselves, like China and Vietnam primarily, is this patriotism and nationalism, which I think undermines a lot of the good things these countries can do, because it really puts a lot of the interest based in like a weird idea of a country before a lot of things that they should be focusing on, like, you know, socialist programs and stuff like that. But I do understand the need sometimes in socialist revolutions for patriotism, that includes Ireland, but that is because you're trying to create a new nation based on hopefully like left-wing ideals. So whether that happened in places like Cuba, Vietnam, other countries, you know, that revolted, they try and take the parts of their history that, you know, are more compatible with left-wing views. And it is also quite easy to do sometimes when your people have been historically colonized by other people. So in Vietnam's case, colonized by China, then France, then America. In Ireland's case, colonized by the English for like 800 years. In Cuba's case, it's like this mix of different groups of people and it's been suffering at the hands of the Spanish and the Americans and stuff. So that makes it very easy to spread this more like left-wing patriotic message. But when you have stuff like the American Revolution, which isn't a left-wing revolution, revolution so the rich people in America could could stay rich and actually control their own society and construct their own society and it's based on slavery and it's based on killing all native peoples there really isn't much redeeming about settler colonial nations so i would say you cannot be a left-wing patriot of a settler colonial nation because the nation doesn't represent anything good like what are you trying to redeem in that country but yeah by and large being a left-wing patriot for like northern ireland canada australia new zealand america and israel makes zero sense because there is nothing redeeming about the founding of those states and there's nothing redeeming about those states actions and foreign policy so we got that out the way we got out my views on america generally which i think you know number one enemy of working class people in the world but sadly americans have been fed a diet of american exceptionalism probably since its founding and of course at different periods it goes up to insane levels like the cold war for example in like the 60s and the 1980s hit these hysterical levels, but also with the end of the, you know, the Soviet Union, there was this belief that, you know, America had triumphed and this capitalist neoliberal system is the way forward for humanity. And there's probably loads of people who were educated in the 1990s who also believed that. And then you had the Bush presidency. So there are probably even more people educated in the early 2000s who would believe this. And obviously, since then, loads more people have become disillusioned with America. And you see a lot more Americans not actually liking their country and hating their country. And of course, marginalized groups in America have never liked what it stood for, but I think you see more like white people now not agreeing with it as well. So to start with, I thought we'd talk about a more like meme -y subreddit before talking about like a less political subreddit, which I think might be more telling. So there's a subreddit called Gen USA, and it has a picture of Douglas MacArthur, obviously the main general in the Pacific Theater of War for America, but also before being fired by Truman, um, was in charge of the Korean conflict. And in the picture, it's got a flag of China burning behind him because he actually wanted to nuke China during the Korean War, part of the reason he was actually fired from his post. So yeah, you gotta take some of these posts with a pinch of salt, but a lot of them aren't being ironic in how much they support American like foreign policy and stuff. And it's really cringe and it's really insane to think that these people think America is a good force in the world. But the subreddit says, this subreddit is for American and Western unity and for the promotion of democratic principles, that's funny, across the world, which while being against those who deny such principles, Gen USA is also a place to discuss, debunk and show propaganda far left and far right. So enlightened centrist of a subreddit and meme. We do not have any specific political leanings. It's pretty clear they lean neoconservative. And I just want to read the rules quick. I feel like they break their rules, mainly number four. Advocating for killing civilians, nuclear war. Any serious wish for the death on any country is not allowed. Uh, keep this one in mind because we're going to see some stuff that in my mind clearly breaks this. But if you go on it today, you see stuff like this. 
People flee from communism. They rarely, if ever, flee to communism. Actual photo of Cuban refugees paddling their rafts from Miami back to Cuba to take advantage of Castro's amazing literacy program. I mean, in this subreddit, are people going to talk about the embargo? And of course, people flee Cuba because of economic reasons, right? I mean, sure, some people probably flee for political reasons, but it feels like in a poor country like Cuba, economic reasons are the key reason people flee. And who really exacerbates all their economic problems? Oh yeah, the US embargo that's gone on for the last 60 years. The subreddit, of course, doesn't mention that because most pro-American subreddits don't. But then if you go a bit further, they love equating um, the Soviet Union with Germany in the 1930s. So friendly reminder, these two are the same thing. Again, you have to be insanely brainwashed to even think these are the same thing. Like, even if you absolutely hate the Soviet Union, right? Two people who wrote the Black Book of Communism disowned the book because one of the authors made so much stuff up, right? Because he was trying to basically do this, basically even trying to say it was worse than Germany. Like, this isn't just like American propaganda. This is obviously just like anti-communism to the extreme. Like I said, you don't have to like the Soviet Union to realize these two weren't the same thing. So they said it in rule four that you're not allowed to talk about um, wishing death and stuff like that, but they don't really have much problem in promoting things and people that cause a lot of death. So um, Gen Z Kaishek has been created, formal invitation for Gen USA members to join. We simp for Chad Sai Wen and her great leadership Gen Z Kaishek join now, guys. At least someone says, as a Taiwanese, he's not really a good man, and I'm being very nice with my vocabulary here. So yeah, in the American subreddit, they're all cheering for um, Chiang Kaishek. Chiang Kaishek, who killed thousands of innocent Chinese people under the guise of uh, anti-communism and killed loads of uh, Taiwanese native people as well, and then ruled as an authoritarian dictator, as did his son. Because uh, nothing screams freedom and democracy like Chiang Kai-shek's dictatorship uh, in the Republic of China. And these guys think they're the good guys and they think all communist nations are the bad guys. So let's move on a bit more. So this one's funny. Um, so they hate history memes because occasionally in history memes, they, they post some anti-American stuff. But generally when I go on it, they don't really post much anti-American stuff. Here's what the meme says, uh, myth. The USA doesn't teach about any of the bad stuff it did. Fact, the USA did so much bad stuff that it's nearly impossible to teach about it all. I think this is true because even as someone who did a history degree, a lot of it focusing on America and did like an international relations masters, doing a lot of stuff on American foreign policy and war and stuff, you just start learning about so many insane things. Like I didn't go down the rabbit hole of MK Ultra uh, like properly until I was a bit older. I'm just like, why was this a thing? Like this is so evil and I'm only just finding out about it. How does everyone not know about this? And then you just find so many like different programs in you know, Vietnam and you read about all the secret covert ops in this part of the world during the 60s and 70s. And you're like, damn, this is just evil. I've never, never learned about that. So yeah, that, that post is pretty spot on because even when you learn about horrible things, something like HBO's Watchmen comes out talking about the Tulsa massacre and everyone suddenly learns about something else that was really horrible, which had been erased by like American textbooks and stuff. So this comment underneath made me laugh. Um, Compared to countries that have literal shrines and churches dedicated to their war crimes, I'd say that USA is doing a decent job in teaching their history from my experience. I've legit never encountered an American, save for some deranged ultranationalist, who claim their country is innocent. Do they not know what subreddit they're posting on? But I do find that funny. I think they're talking about Japan there, which I've called out a load of times for its shrines to, you know, war criminals and stuff. Shrines to war criminals. America. There are no statues to all the war criminals in American history. Donald Trump didn't say that um, Andrew Jackson was his favorite president. There's not portraits of all these terrible presidents in the White House statues all over America. How many high schools were named after Confederate leaders for hundreds of years and that's still a massive culture war in America? Again, no like shrines to war criminals. That doesn't make me laugh. Like, yeah, sure. Loads of countries have horrible things, like horrible shrines to war criminals. Britain has loads of terrible people like Winston Churchill. We have shrines to them and stuff as well. Ask a lot of Indian people what they think of Winston Churchill. I don't know why you'd get so butthurt about people pointing out that America has an absolutely terrible history. And America does not have a good track record at teaching its history and even teaching some things in its history now 
is getting a massive pushback and is being called cultural Marxism and critical race theory. And Americans don't even learn like so much about their history generally. Like I know some of you guys who grew up in like Los Angeles and stuff, you say your history is pretty well taught. But I also know from a lot of people I spoke to who grew up in more Republican states, you pretty much don't learn anything terrible that happened. And now in places like Florida, with Ron DeSantis saying that America isn't built on stolen land, do you think people are gonna be taught much about American history? So this is still up. MacArthur was right, Truman. MacArthur should have used the atom bomb against the Red Chinese during the Korean War. I thought you weren't allowed to advocate for this type of thing on the subreddit. This was posted a day ago and I guess it's okay when it's Chinese people, you can just advocate for the atom bomb being dropped. Apparently this guy was joking because someone said serious question, how old are you? I can't imagine someone over 15 unironically thinking this would be a good idea. So more stuff, should the US declare war on Mexican cartels? Tom Cotton, yeah, very liberal guy there, called for a war against cartels a couple of weeks ago. I wish the US military went in there and finished that scum. But of course, it's not that easy to do, so what do you think? If American tourists were killed by them, I would be cool if US military went in there to send a message, but that's it. Either use airstrikes, drones, or send in spec ops and pull out. Because stuff like that has never been bad. Like The war on drugs hasn't been a total failure where they have like literally done those things for, I don't know, like 50 years at this point. I don't think these guys either know their history that well or they just do not value the lives of non-Americans. And what a disaster American drug policy has been for Latin American people. But then you get more stuff like this. This has made me hate them even more. Dark Boris Johnson... Boris Johnson tipped to become the next general secretary of NATO. Uh, if he does, I really hope he pushes for more alignment and responsibility with Ukraine. Other people simping for him. And then one person posting the truth. The guy whose party was being funded by Russia, which is true. Russian oligarchs have historically funded the Tory party. And then someone saying, you're thinking of Corbyn. Corbyn was the Russian plant who stacked the party with Russian spies. Although Starmer has done a damn good job purging the bigots and fifth columnists from Labour over the past few years, there is still work to do. Got based Zionism as his flair. And that's got uh, seven upvotes. And the guy who told the truth about Boris Johnson being funded by Russia uh, has 11 downvotes because patriotism just melts your brain and ruins all your critical thinking skills. Because Corbyn apparently took Russian money when he's the guy who'd been highlighting for years that the Tory party had actually been taking Russian money. But yeah, what can you expect from uh, American patriots? Do you think they're the smartest people with the best critical thinking skills? So then you have them posting stuff like Dr. Zhu saying, be wary of those who tell you that we don't need American leadership on the world stage. People saying seriously, the US cannot and should not shirk the powers that our position as a true global superpower allows us. We are literally the safeguard of the world, the heir of Pax Britannica. Oh, nothing like being the heir to a horrible, horrible British empire. If we don't safeguard others, they'll just start killing each other over relatively dumb sh Yeah, because uh, America has safeguarded the world, not dropping more bombs uh, on Vietnam than the whole bombs dropped in World War II because its people wanted to be communists, right? That is America uh, preserving democracy and freedom. I guess maybe they are the heir to the British Empire, but they're not stopping conflict. They literally have military bases all over the world. They have been engaged in war constantly throughout the whole century, basically. I don't think there's a country with a higher body count than America since the end of the Second World War. And then they also back the worst regimes who do the worst things. And then of course, backing Israel, backing the Saudis, even backing Saddam Hussein against Iran in the 1980s. Yeah, America is great. We should never challenge its domination of the world. It's really great for everyone. I think this just sums up the subreddit pretty well though. Um, eight days ago, mission accomplished. Also the Iraq war was good and has a meme about George Bush getting rid of Saddam Hussein. And then lots of people were supporting the invasion. This guy's got zero four in his username. So potentially he was born in 2004, like <laughs> during the actual war itself. So he doesn't even remember it. Uh, the issue wasn't the invasion itself, but the fact that the idiots who planned it didn't bother to even think about what they would do afterwards. 
Literally zero long-term planning went into the invasion. Plans other than, well, invade, then install democracy, it will all work out. So there are a lot of things nobody talks about when it comes to this war. Saddam was on the verge of controlling over 70% of the global oil supply, and he was invading other countries around him, like, you know, just one country, Kuwait. He also killed hundreds of thousands of his own citizens. The West was going to get involved anyway, and we were right next door, so we decided to act on it then and there. Yeah, so nothing more patriotic about supporting a war where thousands of Americans died um, basically to overthrow a guy so American companies could access Iraqi oil. Like, that's patriotic, right? That is why the war was fought. The war wasn't fought for human rights, freedom, and democracy and stuff. These guys can tell themselves that. Yeah, Saddam Hussein was a bad guy. They didn't care in the 1980s when he was fighting Iran, though. But these guys just don't know anything. Like, if that guy was seriously born in 2004, he's probably just read about the war on Wikipedia, and then he just fought in his head, well, Saddam bad, so America good, America take out Saddam, and that is like inherently good. The only problem is they didn't plan for anything afterwards. Well, even the Iraqis who wanted Saddam gone, loads of them started fighting the Americans because they wanted the Americans gone as well. Like lots of people who were oppressed by Saddam Hussein in like Shia militias and stuff, they started fighting the Americans in the insurgency because they didn't want this imperialism. They didn't want American capitalist stooge governments. They wanted their own freedom and they wanted to create their own system of government, not something America imposed on them. And America did that for neoconservative ideology. And as my lecturer at university said, it wasn't just about oil, but if Iraq didn't have loads of oil, the war wouldn't have happened. But this subreddit is often indistinguishable from the Bush administration. So this was also posted two weeks ago. Um, the US needs to do another regime change in Iran. Everyone I have said this to and other subs gets mad at me, but I firmly believe this. If you disagree, tell me why. Iran is committing horrific violence against their own people. Why would we allow this regime to exist? And again, it's amazing how much these people are brainwashed. They think America is more on the situation, right? Even if America domestically isn't as bad as the Iranian government, America as a whole is far worse than the Iranian government just because it does so many terrible things every day to so many different countries and historically has done terrible things to different countries. And Iran is actually in the situation it's in because of the American government. So if you guys also know your history, you know George Bush wanted to overthrow the Iranian government as well. I don't know if these people even know that. But also, um, why did the Iranians overthrow their own government? Could it be that the US backed an uh, autocratic dictator? After they actually overthrew Iranian democracy because BP and American oil companies wanted the oil contracts, right? America already overthrew the Iranian government in 1953. This is why American exceptionalism is such a dangerous ideology when it reaches the halls of power, because what about the Iranian people? What do they want? Do they want you overthrowing their government? I bet most Iranians don't want America coming to their country, invading, killing thousands of them and installing an American puppet government as they did in Afghanistan and Iraq and numerous other countries throughout history because these countries have to develop on their own. Iranians would vastly prefer themselves to overthrow their own government and create their own system of government. Why would they want Americans? So why don't you Americans ever think about what Iranians want, right? They don't want you to overthrow their government. Most countries don't want America to overthrow their government. And if they do, like some in Iraq, they want you to leave straight away. And America doesn't really leave. And that is what the massive problem with this stuff is. And also the belief that America is some benevolent force that will just go around the world, fixing democracies and stuff like that, creating these free places to live is so laughable and naive and just shows the, probably the average age of people in this subreddit is about 14. Like, how can you believe this? And even suggest this might be a good thing. But at the same time, this subreddit also supports Israel, right? So you're gonna overthrow the Iranian government for what they're doing, which is bad right now. Do you think the Iranian government is acting worse than the Israeli government has historically to Palestinian people, which it also oppresses, right? But is there any talk on this subreddit that the US government should overthrow the Israeli government? There's actually no talk of that. There's actually loads of talk about base Zionism and how good America is. So Israel and America, an unbeatable alliance. Israel lives rent-free on pro-Palestinian protesters' heads since 1967. Yes, I'm a lib left. Yes, I support the US and Israel. We exist. So this is a subreddit that thinks America is a force for freedom and democracy, which should go topple the Iranian government, but should also be best pals with the Israeli government, because that's consistency, isn't it? And that's the thing. Like, Even if you believe America is a bastion of freedom and democracy, and it should go around the world, neoconservative style, toppling authoritarian regimes and replacing them with a 
free capitalist regimes, uh, which are just puppet governments of the United States. Surely you'd apply that consistently, right? Why not overthrow the Israeli government too? Why are you at it? Why don't you free the Palestinian people? Why don't you fund the Palestinian insurgency and stuff like that? Why don't you do that? Um, because these people are all Western chauvinist racist and they only believe someone is bad if they don't conform with uh, Western values. I believe people in Iran can't, you know, have their own agency, can't overthrow their own government. They need America to come in, probably kill loads of civilians and install a pro-American government like they did in 1953. It's already been tried and you guys don't even know that apparently. And it's just pretty stunning how poorly these people actually understand history in which they're posting about how great Chiang Kai-shek was. They're posting about overthrowing the Iranian government. They're posting about how America doesn't glorify terrible people in their history like other countries does, like Japan or something. And there's just no sense of irony here. And that's the amazing thing. So I hope most people in that subreddit are a lot younger. And maybe as they get older, they'll learn. And I have a feeling they are a bit younger, but at the same time, you can never be sure of stuff like Reddit. So that is that ridiculous subreddit. But now to give one that is a bit more, let's say, non-political maybe, and a bit more less neoconservative. And that is r slash America. So this actually inspired the video because I saw this like ages ago and I thought it'd be fun to go through. And to be fair, like I said, this is a subreddit where they are self-aware enough to say bad things about America too. And they are self-aware enough to meme America and talk about all the crazy stuff. And sometimes in a kind of like, you know, way that admires it and being like, you know, that's the quirk of America. That is why we like America. And sometimes you're know, just making fun of America's blunders, including foreign policy. But as we're gonna see in this subreddit too, American exceptionalism poisons your brain where you just start conforming with the American state's interest kind of without even realizing it, which we're gonna get into. So if we just go through the subreddit, you see stuff like this, pretty positive. You are either an American or you're a traitorous and you know, that's pretty cool to see. After six years, my wife and me became American citizens. We can't be more proud. People will upvote in that saying it's great. More like meme -y stuff, like Americans own 46% of the world's 1 billion guns, says the UN. Um, you have stuff like this, like, when you use baby oil so you know your baby is well protected and it's got american soldiers around it obviously you know memeing about american foreign policy and stuff like that uh you have another one upvoted raytheon and like all the other arms companies uh come on do a war poking the american flag so yeah this subreddit isn't as bad as the other one which is a bunch of like teenagers all talking about toppling foreign governments and how neoconservatism is great despite pretending they're like liberals and stuff this is more like self-aware which is a good thing but then you get really weird stuff in here as well which I want to talk about just because I feel like it's a better example of people just, you know, taking in this American exceptionalism without critical thinking. So then I come across this post 19 days ago, no more Shay Day, October 9th, the day Shea Guevara received justice, 240 uh, upvotes. And then I'm just thinking, like, do Americans even understand why they hate Shea Guevara? Like, tell me in the comments, why, why do Americans who aren't like from Cuba or something why do they hate Che Guevara? That's what I mean. Like you have to be brainwashed by the American system to hate Che Guevara because why do you even care about him? So Che Guevara led one revolution which kicked out the Italian mafia and a corrupt right-wing dictatorship from Cuba, right? He then promptly left Cuba to go fight European colonialism in the Congo before going to Bolivia to fight their right-wing American-backed government, right? Never did anything to America. He barely even served in the Cuban government. So I don't understand why do Americans hate him? Why would you celebrate this? Unless you're like some rich Cuban who was kicked off their plantation when the communists took over. I don't understand. What's he ever done to America? He hasn't done anything to America. He hasn't done anything to Americans. He literally just fought for socialism around the world against Western colonialism. That's the kind of like the status quo of American teaching is that you should just hate everything communist because communist bad. But again, this isn't Fidel Castro, right? This isn't someone you can talk about the Cuban governments and the pros and cons of the Cuban government. This is literally a guy, a guerrilla leader, who went around the world just fighting until he died. I don't understand what he did to America to make you hate him, but I think it's you know quite an indictment that on a subreddit that's pro-American, that isn't even like massively political, stuff like this just gets upvoted because you know it's great to celebrate the death of a guy who fought for marginalized groups and fought for freedom around the world. I thought Americans like freedom. So I don't know how this has popped up so much, um, that there's loads of pro-Israeli stuff in here as well. A Palestinian woman walks next to a man wearing a US flag 
in Jerusalem. And then you have comments like this upvoted. Funny, I looked on a map and I didn't see any country called Palestine. Fun fact, Israel is one of the very few countries in the Middle East where Arab women can vote, which isn't actually true either. Also the only country that they can stand up and publicly criticize their government without any fear of retribution. Don't be Palestinian though, because if you're a child who protests the government, you might be locked in solitary confinement and you might be killed as well. So Israel stands with Las Vegas and the United States of America. Tel Aviv City Hall today. I guess American patriotism goes hand in hand with uh, supporting other settler colonial nations around the world. Um, this stuff's a bit weird. Apparently lots of them have been saying that the world has been begging for American intervention in Ukraine. So you have memes like this, 3,700 upvotes. Uh, the world, why does the US feel the need to be the world police and stick their nose in everyone's business? Just leave them alone, stop with the imperialism. Also the world, why doesn't the US do more policing in the world and help out more? Then you have comments under here, which are so delusional. Uh, these people probably post on the other subreddit as well. I'm gonna be honest, I can't decide either. If we are not the world leaders, China or Russia will be. And that won't be good for anyone because the US being that leader is good for everyone, like apparently. Our American values beliefs are objectively better. Look at what happened when we leave. In Afghanistan, under our rule, girls were going to school, we left, and the Taliban took over. There's no doubt in my mind that we are a force for good in the world, especially compared to the alternatives. But is it really worth it to send our kids to die for other countries? It's very complicated. Again, this isn't the other subreddit. This is the America subreddit. Imagine how brainwashed you have to be to think America is a force for good in the world. Like how much you have to ignore. And they obviously are all talking about American values of freedom and democracy. I don't even know how to really talk about this because it's so insane to me. People can think America stands for freedom and democracy. There's not even freedom and democracy for American citizens. Like I said, it has the highest prison population in the world based on a private prison industry and a war on drugs that targets marginalized community. It in essence still has slavery and they're talking about it being a force for good and exporting this around the world. And of course, for someone like me, they're exporting capitalism around the world. And that's what they've always done. They're propping up the capitalist system. That's not good for anyone. And these people think it's good for people because they think about freedom and democracy and stuff like that and all that BS. But again, imagine thinking this, imagine thinking this. I feel bad for this person. Like their critical thinking skills is absolute garbage. And also thinking American values are superior to Russia and China. Like even if you agree like the American government and the system is better than, okay, let's say it's better than Russia, for example. You still think American actions around the world have benefited humanity primarily. Also, let's say compared with China, for example, let's say China has a worse domestic system, for example, or the Chinese government is worse than the American government. Um, China also doesn't go around the world in imperialism all the time. Not saying it's a good country, not saying it wouldn't do that if it was in the US's position as well. But I am saying it's bizarre to you know look at American history since the end of the Second World War and think the US leadership of the world has been a good thing for humanity. The only way you can think that is if you've swallowed American propaganda wholesale and you have no critical thinking skills, because even at home, America does not stand for these values. It's what they brainwash you with so you don't criticize the system and you think this is as good as it's gonna get. That's why so many people think America is the best country on earth when its life expectancy has just gone below China's and is nowhere near Cuba's despite being the richest country in the whole world. So what is that wealth doing? Is it just going to 1%? Is it just benefiting rich people? Is America completely designed just to extract wealth from your average American to enrich 1%? Is that something that should be exported around the world? I don't think so. And just to end it, uh, anti-fascists disrupting a large group of white supremacists showing like the D-Day landings. I think they should just show um, a picture of me roasting these subreddits because I think that would be more accurate. So that is everything I wanted to show you from these subreddits. And there isn't like a massive point to this video. I'm not saying like all Americans are brainwashed, but I think American exceptionalism uh, being still relevant today is really funny. And I think the rise of China has helped exacerbate this where it's like Red Scare 3.0. And these people ironically think the American system of government is the best in the world. America as the world police or the leader of, you know, capitalism and the leader of the capital hegemony of the world is a good thing for us. And if America stepped back, it would be bad for the world. In my opinion, if we're talking about like competing world powers, I would rather more powers competing than just America versus China or just America versus Russia or something like that. I think like multipolarism in this world where nation states do exist is a better thing. And I'd like more of the progressive countries, hopefully if Brazil 
uh, gets Vula in to organize together so they can be this, you know, fairly powerful block against things like US imperialism or things to do with Russia and stuff like that. But yeah, in these subreddits, just not knowing history properly and thinking the US is a force for good in the world just shows what growing up in this country and growing up in this education system does to you, especially when you're not only growing up in a country that does that, because many countries do that, the UK does that as well. Probably not to as a hysterical degree as the US does, but also you are growing up in the superpower when it's still the superpower. So you're being told America is the greatest country on earth. You're pledging allegiance to that flag, which represents settler colonialism. And then you're going around telling people that America is a force for good in the world and America has benefited the world. And you just live your life like that while living in a country where the poverty is so visible, while living in a country which imprisons its own citizens to a degree that is not seen anywhere else in the world. And people talk about America being the height of freedom. America, that's America which should export, you know, its ideology around the world. It's America which should overthrow every government it doesn't like to free the citizens. It should never leave Afghanistan, just stay there forever. Anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.